All I want is to be able to add some visual effects to my videos without breaking my computer and feel like I'm working on a slideshow. Is that so much to ask? Well, as it turns out, it is. Seriously, I'm just trying to up my game and make my videos more entertaining to watch. I don't want to make proxies. I want a golden goose. And while buying the right computer is trickier than I thought, I have learned a couple workarounds, which is a huge help for me, which is what I want to share with you. I'll get to that in a moment. In case you haven't been following me on my journey to edit video as well. In 2020, I knew I'd be working with 4K files. I bought a Windows laptop with an RTX 2080. Eh. Then I bought an 11th gen i7 desktop with a 3080 in it. Meh. Then I bought an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Meh. I returned that, got an M3 Max MacBook Pro, and here I am, months later, still editing slideshows. Honestly though, I'm not mad. I love it. This is how I learn and hey, I get to share what I learn with you. And look, the M3 Max is great for video editing, pretty much any codec smooth like butter like I showed in my last video. By video editing, I mean trimming the videos, playing around with color, adding basic texts. It can handle anything. It's the best thing I've used so far, no question. However, it falls flat on its face when it comes to adding visual effects. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic here. It's actually pretty good. It's just not great. Adding VFX in Resolve as I'm learning is a huge bottleneck for most computers. Let's hop over to Resolve so you can see more about what I'm talking about. Okay, this is 4K 60 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, HEVC, H.265. Look how well it runs and edits on the Max straight out of camera. Nice, right? Look what happens when I add the old digital glitch text animation effect. It doesn't play it smoothly, it slows down. I wanna be able to use magic masks, track things, add cool texts, add cool effects, but the problem is when your timeline starts getting complicated, the whole thing becomes tough to work on. And the codec you use doesn't really make a difference when working with the effects. I wanna be able to watch my footage with effects on without it skipping parts of the video looking like a slideshow. This is GPU power we're talking about and you need crazy power if you want it to handle this stuff. Or you could do workarounds. The first workaround is you could set the render cache to smart. This creates temporary files or a cache on your hard drive from areas in your timeline Resolve predicts will require high processing power. You have to add the effect you want in the timeline, then wait for it to cache before it plays smoothly. It works great and enables the files in your timeline to fly. Seriously, it's really cool. The downside of using this is that it often caches a lot of files, and when you're paying thousands of dollars for a MacBook, chances are you didn't buy more than one terabyte hard drive, and if, like me, that's all you got, well, this cache is going to fill up your hard drive fast. Yikes! Sure, you can buy external SSDs and set them as the cache, but I don't really want to buy more things. That's the whole point of upgrading my computer. Plus, I hate having to remember to delete the cached files, yada yada. Though, to be honest, I will probably do this as my main way of editing moving forward when adding effects. Unless you can suggest a better method. But I also found another alternative way that I really like. And I'm embarrassed to say I only just learned this in the comments from you guys. It's the render in place feature. And it's been right there in front of my face this whole time. I love this, so let me show you how it works. Now you can't just render the effect you wanna use on its own because if you do, it'll create it with a black background. What you do is once you're happy or think you're happy with the effect and where it goes, you put the effect where you want, then you create a compound clip with the clip you want it on, then you render it in place. What I like about this is it asks you where you wanna place that rendered file. I just put it in the folder I'm working with, which I know I will delete after I'm done the project. Then once it's done rendering, boom, smooth playback the rest of the time when working with this project. Cool, right? You know, I just didn't realize you can't work on 4K files willy-nilly, whatever the heck that means. What does that mean? The term is derived from Shakespearean expression will ye nil ye, which is a contraction that means whether one wants to or not. Okay, yeah, ye don't just drop a 4K video in a timeline without proxies then start adding explosions easily. The way everyone talked about the M3 Max being overkill for most people, look, as someone who's just kind of learning how things actually work as I go, I just assumed everyone gushing over the M3 Max would mean I could add explosions explosions, or even simple things like digital glitch texts to my videos without my computer crying in pain, but you can't. Not at least as far as I can tell. You have to work smarter. 
Now, the reason I'm sharing all of this is because, look, you don't need the latest computer. Heck, my plan is to actually return this M3 Max, and I do like the Apple stuff, so I have a M1 Max with 32 gigs lined up that I'm gonna buy. It's half the price. Then I'll get a monitor, create a nice little workstation for when I wanna sit, then be able to have the portability, which I really love. And hopefully the M1 Max gives me enough of the performance. And now that I'm learning where the bottlenecks actually are when video editing, I can create workarounds to enable my creative mind to run wild while not worrying as much about what I can or can't do based on my hardware and without knowing Resolve very well. Anyway, I hope this helps you or gives you some ideas on how you too can take your video editing to the next level without waiting around or wanting to bang your head against the wall because your new computer you bought sucks. It doesn't. If you like the video, please hit the old like button, drop a comment below so we can talk about it. Or if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to have you. I'm trying to grow a couple YouTube channels. And on this channel, I share what I'm learning about when it comes to camera gear, video editing, and all things YouTube. If you missed my last one, check that video out here. Otherwise, maybe watch this one next. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on The Sad Studio.